Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to show you how you can create your own graphics in Photoshop using the pen tool, which in my opinion is the most fundamentally important tool for doing graphic design, whether it's in Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, the best place to do any illustration and graphic design is going to be Illustrator, but for me personally, I'm a heck of a lot more comfortable in Photoshop, and so that's what I like to use. Uh, however, if you are new to both Photoshop and Illustrator, you might as well follow along with Illustrator open, since that's maybe what you'll want to use if you're going to be a full-time graphic designer. So I'm going to open up a uh, new canvas here in Photoshop, just at my default 950 by 950 size, just to give you a little orientation of how the pen tool works. Then we're going to actually do some drawing with it. So uh, over here in my uh, toolbar, I see that we have this one that looks like a fountain pen. So if I click that one, you see that we have this pen now as our tool. The first thing you want to do up here is click up at the top where it says path, if it says path, and confirm that it says shape. Because if you just sketch a path, it's not going to actually fill it and create a shape. It's just going to create a working path, which isn't what you want. So the way that the pen tool works is that you basically create dots and drag anchor points. And so basically each dot is where the pen's gonna connect. So if you draw one dot right here, by just clicking, and you do one dot here, it draws a line. But if when you're dragging at that, or you're clicking to create the dot, you drag your mouse, see how it creates these two lines right here? Those two lines are what are called anchor points. And when you create anchor points, those anchor points dictate where the line wants to go next. So let me give you an example. Let's say I drag my anchor points really, really far out. And then let's say I put my next dot right here where my cursor is. What do you think the line's going to do? Do you think the line's going to connect straight there? Or do you think it's going to maybe bend? Well, if you guess bend, you're correct. See how it naturally wants to bend upwards because of how that anchor point is saying go this way? Uh, so it's a great way to get curves established by dragging these various anchor points. And it can be a, a weird concept to get used to. I know that when I first was using Photoshop, anchor points were difficult because there aren't other programs that work this way. Let me delete this shape. Uh, but as you get used to it and you mess around a little bit, you'll start to really, really like them. Like, I wouldn't want to draw any other way. Now. At first, anchor points can also seem a little bit limiting, like you might feel like there's a lot of stuff you can't do. But you can actually adjust anchor points after you put them down, and you can have anchor points that are not uh, parallel, I guess would be the way to say it. That's not the right word, but that they don't go the same way. So let me show you an example. So by default, see how both anchor points are just uh, kind of like a reflection of the other one? Each one is the same length, it's going out at the same angle, but obviously in the opposite direction. Um, well, if I click here and I hold the Alt key and hover over one of them, see how it turns from the pen into this little like arrow thingy? Well, that means that I can actually adjust this anchor point directly. So I won't do it for this first line, but I'll do it for this next one. So right now I have this kind of like curvy thing. And if I were to click right here, see, it would naturally want to curve like that. But let's say that I wanted it to just go straight this way, make a line like that. Well, if I hold Alt, I can adjust this anchor point now. So now if I put it to right there, look at that. It's just a straight out line. Very cool, right? Um, and additionally, when you're placing a uh, like a, a pen mark, I wish I knew there's got to be some correct lingo for it of what like each pen point is. Um, and it could be that each pen point is an anchor point. I'm so sorry if I'm giving you the wrong terminology. Uh, but when you're placing your new pen point, if you place it and then hold Alt, see how now it's not doing two anchor points, it's just doing one? If I let go of it, it does two anchor points like normal. But if I hold Alt, it's freezing it wherever it is. So it's a good way to save yourself some time if you know that you're going to want to not have those perpendicular anchor points. Does that make a little bit of sense? It's a very cool sort of a feature of the program. So the reason I wanted to give you this quick little overview first is that I am not a graphic designer. 
I'm just not good at it. You know, I'm a, I'm a good web designer. I've talked about this before, but I'm, I don't really consider myself a good graphic designer. I, I can't just illustrate something uh, off the top of my head. I have a challenge with that. And so for me, it's kind of, it comes down to having something to work from if I'm going to illustrate. So right here, I have this cute picture of uh, Bella, my dog, that I'll make kind of a cartoon version of to show you how I will illustrate things in the event that I do it. Generally, I won't do it. I'll just have a graphic designer do it. But uh, if I were to do it, I would first get an anchor point going for her uh, white fur area. And then I'm going to basically just try to create this white area and get her nose done, get her face done, that sort of thing. So I'm going to maybe do one right here. The thing you'll notice is that when you create really long anchor points, like something like that long, you often regret it on the next one because you'll want it to just go here and it'll be way too wide. So that's why you see me kind of bringing my next point to being about right here um, because then it can be shorter. So I'm first going to go around her nose and really for what I'm doing it's basically just tracing. And then for this one I'm going to drag it to about there because that's where I like that one. Then I'm going to hold Alt to bring it down so that it's ready for my next line. And whenever you're doing these anchor points, you want to just make sure that you're not like over committing. So see how this one leaves out a little bit of the white? To me, it's not that important since it's uh, going to be a cartoon anyway. Excuse me. What I usually will do for this kind of thing is I'll put the uh, image that I'm working from on top, then bump the opacity down to like 20% so I'm just able to work off of it. So now I'll make this shape white. And then I'm going to create a shape for her nose now. She's sitting right behind me, so she's probably very flattered that she gets to be the topic for today's tutorial. So again, with this last point, I just held Alt as I was doing it. And this shape's going to be kind of like a dark gray. And then maybe for her nostrils, I'll just do some little uh, black ones. You notice with that last point, I was over committing a little bit, so I just kind of hit Control Z to uh, undo. All right, so let's get our other one in here. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, if you're working off of an image, you'll start to get a feel for it too. So let's see what we got so far. So far, we have a little bit of a nose and some nostrils in it. <laughs> um, okay, so now let's get her face structure done. She's got kind of a uh, an interesting looking face. And the reason that I like to have the uh, top layer be kind of transparent over it is that if I were to be doing my design with uh, my shapes on top, I would often run into issues where I just can't see the layer behind it, so I'm not I'm not tracing it correctly. So let's see how this looks so far. So it's starting to come together. It's starting to actually look like a dog. Now we'll get her uh, tongue done. And because it's going to be behind the white layer, it doesn't really matter what the top of it looks like. <laughs> it's starting to look a little bit cute. And so basically I'll do a kind of a tracing like this and then go back through and adjust some of my uh, other anchor points for things that look weird. Because like if you look at it now, you see your face it looks a little bit too skinny and muscular for it to be cute. So I'll probably go back and adjust that here in a minute. Um, but as you can see, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I did a kind of cartoonification of my face a couple years ago. That was a lot of fun to use on uh, marketing materials and that sort of thing. And I've done this as uh, Christmas presents for people before where I make cartoons of them. And it's a fun thing to know how to do, definitely. So now we'll get her eyes in here. And I'm going to teach you another cool thing today. So I, I don't want to try to make these eye tracings uh, fit exactly to that eye layer. So I'm going to show you how you can actually pin a layer, okay? So let me get this to be the brown that I want. Maybe 
view this layer again. Okay, so let's say I make it this brown, probably end up making it a little bit more yellow and brighter or something like that. Um, just a little warmer. Okay, so I want this to be pinned into the eye. I don't want her brown to be overlapping it. So if I hold Alt and go over to my layers palette and hover in between the two layers, see how my cursor turns into this box with like an arrow? Well, if I click, it now pins that brown shape to the white shape, which is her eye. So it's a great way if you want to be lazy and just get things pinned to each other. Like, uh, so you know, for these daily videos, I do how I have my template or will I have my screenshot of the video? Well, I have a template where it's like a video player, and I'm just pinning each day's screenshot to the layer for the photo, so I don't have to like crop the uh, player portion out and stuff. So we'll get a little uh, pupil in here, which I'm not even gonna bother doing with the pen tool, I'll just create a uh, circle for it. I'm going to do the little white dot thing just by zooming in and making a white dot, see if it looks any good. So it's starting to look pretty cute, right? Zach's got some design shops apparently. So we're going to do the same thing for the other eye real quick. And the main reason that I'm actually just having you watch me work through it is uh, because my hope is that instead of you just actually watching me, you're kind of working through it yourself. Okay, so we got that one drawn. I'll make it white now. I'm gonna do her eye, same fashion as the last one. I'll just be kind of lazy about it. I'm gonna unview this so I can get the right color of brown from the other one pin it. Then we're going to get the pupil up in there. Make sure we make that black. Then the little dot thingy. Well, I don't even know what that's called. What is that called? Let me know what that's called if you know what it's called. But I know it's like light reflecting off of her eye, but I don't know if there's a scientific artsy fartsy term for it. So her tongue, we could do like a little uh, line to indicate that it is a real tongue. Sort of thing. So you can do a lot of detail. Um, the only thing really limiting is your own imagination. I feel like that's what they say in uh, art classes as a kid. So I think what I'm gonna do next is try to make her face a little bit more cute looking. Um, I'll get her ears in here first though, I think. And you notice I bumped the original image up in opacity just to see what it looked like. Um, okay, so here's the image, so I want to do it behind it, so I'm going to click my background layer first. We got our pen tool again. So this is just kind of her ears in general that are going up right here. So. I'm now going to show you what you can do to make anchor points be adjusted later. So I think this right here is way too skinny on her face. So if you have your pen tool selected and you hold control, it turns your uh, pointer into the direct selection tool, which is what you can use to actually select the different points. Um, and I think that they are honestly in retrospect called anchor points and that the things you drag are called anchors. So I've really just been misleading you in terminology this whole time and I'm very sorry for that. Uh, so whenever you click and drag with your direct selection tool, it'll select anchor points. And you got to be careful sometimes because you might select the wrong shape. So I suggest uh, clicking it in your layers palette first and then trying to drag over a point that isn't shared by other things. So like if I were to do something like this, I might accidentally click on her nose, that sort of thing. So uh, let's look at it. So the first thing I do want to fix is this part going in so much. So, see if I click this point, it's done like that. So if I hold uh, control, it'll drag both of them by default. But if I want to just adjust one, I can just uh, do it with the Alt key like before. And if you drag the points themselves, you can just move where they are. 
let's see how that looks by clicking off of it. So that's looking a little bit better, I think, because if I step backward a few steps, you can see the difference and stuff. I mean, I think I might like this one a little bit better since I just I made this a little bit more rounded. And uh, over here, I think I'd like to make this a bit more rounded too. So I'll probably I might I'm just gonna get rid of this anchor point. So if you have it selected and you just have your normal pen tool and you hover over an anchor point, you see that it has that minus next to it. That means you're about to delete an anchor point. So if I do that, we see that that anchor point just goes away. And now we're just left with this. Uh, so pretty cute. And I might, you know, if I wanted to accent that her face was in front of her ears, I could do like just a couple of uh, like light gray lines, something like that, uh, just to show that there's something there. But I think for what we're doing, I might prefer it without it. So, that's Bella. And for artistic reference, come here, Bella. She's napping, so she doesn't really want to come here. You tell me, but uh, do you think that this looks kind of like her? I'd say that she looks kind of like the illustration we did today, so it's your call. So hopefully this has been helpful. Pen tool is a, uh, a great help with graphic design. And get in touch if you have any questions. See ya.